Charles Cogger was the youngest of 14 children born in 1833 at Essex Street, London. His family can be traced back to 1704 when Edward Cogger married Francis Grant at East Farley, a village in Kent, England. In 1841, as a nine-year-old, Charles was living at the home of James Hamilton, a navigation pilot, and his wife Charlotte in Greenwich. Their home included a small school with a headmaster and headmistress. In 1847, tragedy struck when Charles lost his mother Eleanor. He was just 14 years old. And two years later, in 1849, his father Thomas passed away, leaving Charles an orphan at the age of 16. At the age of 20, Charles set sail from Gravesend on the Lady Flora on April the 17th, 1853, along with three cousins bound for Australia. The journey was torturous, as John James Bond, another passenger noted at the time, between decks people were living too much like pigs, and the noise and mess in our saloon cannot be imagined. By Plymouth, still in the channel, many passengers would have left the ship had it docked there. The cabins are so full of insect pests that many persons sleep on the tables. By the time the equator was crossed, with three months to go, grog supplies were nearly exhausted. By June the 7th, Ale and stout were all sold. The noise of the waters can be compared to the howling of a hundred thousand wild beasts, he said. On arrival at Port Phillip, exactly four months to the day, on August the 17th, 1853, as Bond said, We were three parts starved. We have not had fresh meat once. We have been surrounded by grease and dirt and thousands of bugs. As to the conditions that welcomed them, Bond noted that, for food and lodgings, a sovereign here represents a shilling at home. In Melbourne, the workers are less industrious than at home. One may be leisurely working whilst two others smoke and look on and Australia is well known as the most drunken country in the world. Charles spent time from the late 1850s working for the Geological Survey Company of Victoria. There he met the photographer, geologist, Richard Daintree, and the man whose daughter he would later marry, Carl Deal. He compiled a collection of Daintree's images that are held in the Victorian State Library. He married Carl's daughter Emile Frederic Deal at All Saints in St Kilda in 1863 and was employed as a piano forte maker, his London profession, and also as a surveyor in the suburb of Brighton. Sometime around 1860, he was employed as the driver of the first coach to travel between Brighton and Melbourne, with a fare of two and six each way. His first child, Thomas, was born in 1864, when the family was living in Collins Street, Brighton. In 1865, Charles purchased land at Mount Macedon, a place he had admired during his time with the survey company. He transformed this land into a flourishing orchard stretching from Devonshire Lane to the Camelot boundary and down Devonshire Lane to what would later become Coggers Lane. His second son, Charles Deal, was born in Meredith in 1866, after which Charles moved to Wood End where he operated a furniture shop. Charles built a house on the property at Macedon and later extended it and added a second story. He established a furniture factory close to Patterson's Mill, 
he made much of the furniture in the Church of Good Shepherd at Upper Macedon. Charles' dedication to his community was evident as he was appointed to the committee of the Mount Macedon School No. 415 in 1868. He also established an orchard of five acres that had many exotic plants, including a monkey puzzle tree, the seeds for which came from Kew Gardens in England. Charles would contribute dahlias, fuchsias, lilies and nuts to the Wood End Horticultural Show, as reported in the Wood End paper in 1894. Charles owned two vehicles, and they were the only ones in the community. He would use these vehicles to transport his fruit to the Macedon railway station, and on such occasions, many folk often asked him for rides to the station, and this gave him the idea of starting a transport service, which he did in 1876. He bought two more wagonettes and another van. In time, he was operating eight wagonettes, two vans and five drays. To pull these, he had between 30 and 40 horses, which were in a paddock where the house Matlock now stands. As well as regular services to and from the station to meet the trains, his cabs and buggies carried vice regal passengers, not only to the government cottage, but also to functions at Government House in Melbourne. In fact, any government work requiring transport was always carried out by Coggins. Charles and Emily had ten children, four boys and six girls. Thomas, born 1864 in Brighton. Charles Deal Cogger, born 1866 in Meredith. And born at Mount Macedon were Joanna, 1868, Eleanor Harper, 1869, Emily, 1871, Ernest Frederick, 1873, Henry Edward, called Harry, in 1875, Emily, born 1876, Bertha, born 1877, and finally Anne Marie, in 1880. As time passed, Charles handed over the carriage business to Henry, or Harry, and Charles, becoming known as the Cogger Brothers. Charles was involved in the Upper Macedon Drama Group in 1884, and in 1887 he was elected president with his eldest son Thomas, also a member of the committee. Cogger's conveyance is mentioned as collecting passengers from Macedon Station for a half our uphill journey to visit Sir George Verdon's grounds as reported in the Australasian newspaper in 1885. In 1888 he was a director of the Kyneton Carriage Company with a capital of £15,000. Charles Wagonettes were used in 1890 to transport the Governor Lord Hopeton to Upper Macedon where he was to spend a holiday. Also in that year, he won the contract for mail delivery between Macedon and Upper Macedon twice a day, with an extra journey to be made from Upper Macedon during the summer months for the sum of £45. The Port Standard of 1891, a Mr Splodger reports on a fine trip to Macedon, where on the second day he said, Next morning we were waited on by our friend Mac who had with him an old identity of the district, Mr Cogger, who had a pair of splendid horses attached to a wagonette. Further into the day, Splodger explained, Still higher yet we climb, our guide, philosopher and friend, Cogger, points out the views and explaining our route. Towards the end of the day, he goes on, Back we started for Mr Cogger's large property and wandered on through his garden and well-kept stables. In 1899, Charles purchased 100 acres of land at Carlsruhe Railway Station. Then, in 1901, Charles purchased another 214 acres at Greenhill, near Kyneton, where he turned horses out to graze. 
They were taken there by his eldest son, Tom, where they were spelled during the winter months. Tom and his wife, Evelyn, built a house at Greenhill and raised a family there before moving to Druin in 1918. In 1901, Charles was a signatory to the Municipal Association of Victoria's Commonwealth Day Proclamation, celebrating Australia's federation on behalf of the Shire of Gisborne. The Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and York visited Australia in May 1901 to open the first Commonwealth Parliament. During their visit, Lord Hopeton, the newly appointed Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia, engaged four Coggart wagonettes to be in attendance at Government House. In 1903, Charles was elected Shah President of the Gisborne Council with an allowance of £10. Emma Lee and Charles lived out their lives at the Laurels on Mount Macedon. Emma Lee died there on July the 15th, 1905. In 1912, Charles made a trip to the old country and the continent. In his old age, Charles still enjoyed his gardening, as the Ballarat Star reported in 1915, an extraordinary yield of potatoes is reported from Upper Macedon, where Charles Cogger lately obtained no less than three quarters of a hundredweight from a single stalk. That's over 38 kilograms. Later that year, he died in Macedon at the age of 82, one of the oldest residents of Macedon. After World War I, taxis were introduced by the Coggers, and this carried on until it passed from the family's hands after World War II.